Is Australia's population growth outstripping our water growth? Let's have a look. Good evening, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my stein of coffee, and before I settle in for my night shift of work, I thought we'd have a look again at our water here in Australia. Now, earlier today, I did a video on water scarcity in New South Wales, and I got access to this Excel spreadsheet, which includes all of the large dams in Australia. Now, let's have a look at what the definition of a dam is again, or a large dam. So, a large dam, well, you know, what is a dam anyway? Just in case you don't know, in case you don't know, you know, dams store water in a reservoir during times of excess flow so that the water can be released from the reservoir during the times that natural flows are inadequate to meet the needs of water users. So what I've done, I've, I've calculated, I've used the reservoir capacity of these dams. I mean, they can halt over it uh, in times of flood and they overflow, but that's generally what they measure it to that, to that figure. So that's what I've used, so remember that one. So why are they important? Well, they provide water security, essentially, for drinking and bathing, water for industry, for irrigation for crops, for power generation, for fishing, recreation, other needs. So it's important to our civilization. It is very important to our civilization. And this is the definition of large dams. And I want to go through this because these are the dams I'm talking about here when I'm looking at how much our water supply capacity or water storage capacity has increased in the last 18 years, two decades, we'll say. So a large dam is defined as one which is um, a more than 15 meters in height measured from the lowest point of the general foundations to the crest of the dam, b more than 10 meters in height as in a, provided they comply with at least one of the following conditions. The crest is not less than one, oh, I keep changing that l to a one, I don't know why, uh, is less than 500 meters in length. Two, the capacity of the reservoir formed by the dam is not less than one million cubic meters. The maximum flood discharge dealt with by the dam is not less than 2,000 cubic meters per second, or the dam is in a, an unusual design. No dam less than 10 meters in height is included. So, you know, this is Australia's over 500 large dams. During 1962, the Australian National Committee on Large Dams, and called, this is the group where I'm getting this information from, prepared on behalf of the International Commission of Large Dams, a register of large dams in Australia for the inclusion in the World Register of Dams. Since this time, the Register of Large Dams in Australia has been updated on many occasions, with the last update being conducted in 2010, which I find hard to believe because they've added some dams since that. So, I mean, you know, here's some, uh, we'll have a look at you know, here's some pictures of just some dams that we'll be looking at. These, this is the idea and how many we have. Now, Australia's got lots of dams, more than I realized. I love going to them. They're fun. People, you know, fish on them. We drink water from them all the time. And they, you know, help us live our lives. They help people farm. They're very useful. You know? And how many do you think? Now, let, let, before I go into this glossary here, how many dams or what percentage of water do you think we've increased compared to our population increase? What do you reckon? What do you think? So I'll just wait. I'll let you put it in the comments and then we can come back and we can see if you're right. Give it as a percentage. And I'll let you know it's more than zero. It's more than zero. So just some definitions we want to look at here. And, you know, I'll link to this. Um, I've got a copy of this on my website and I'll link to the Ancold website if you want to get the original and just the different types of dams. I've been counting as water supply. These are the ones I'm looking at. So if we jump to this Excel table here and we can see, we can see here. Okay, in the blue, this is, this is showing, I've put a filter on it to, to show the relative capacity of these dams. So hang on, I'll zoom in to make it a bit bigger. So you can see here, you know, this is a dam. Its purpose is H. And that is a hydroelectric one. It doesn't have any other purposes. But look at that huge capacity. That's in Tasmania, Queenstown, Lake Gordon Dam, built in 1974. 
So it just shows you. And this is probably one of the biggest dams we have in the country, actually, because I've got them all in here. I'm looking at Australia as well. So what I did is I took the table they gave me and I adjusted it to filter per purpose. So we'll say here, I'll just change it to S. And, you know, I've got some of them up here. I've, I've filtered in green. Uh, and you can see, you know, the capacity of these dams here and when they were made, you know, six, the year and everything is all available there. So what I did, what I did is I looked at a population in 2000 because someone left a comment that, that I hadn't, you know, a population had increased 40% since the year 2000 and our dams hadn't increased. And I thought that was insane. I know that, you know, I've made that claim in the past that we've, you know, increased our population significantly, but we haven't built any new dam infrastructure. And it depends on really how you measure it, because according to this, we have built new large dam infrastructure since the year 2000, but our population has already also increased. And I thought we'd go through our the total calcs here and just have a bit of a talk to it. And I will upload this file with all my little, you know, copying and pasting so you can tear it apart, guys, and let me know if I buggered it up. But the total water supply, and these here, this, I've done this in four rows because here there's like four purposes. So a dam here like this one, its main, well, its initial purpose is S supply of water. Its secondary purpose is H for hydropower. And it is, you know, the Warrag uh, Warragamba Dam at Penrith in New South Wales, built in 1960. So I had to do it in four rows to make sure I caught all the dams that had multiple uses because they didn't use commas in this table for some reason. But, you know, can't complain. So the total capacity on this list up to now, when this was asked, uh, dated or updated in Australia, and let's just put commas in here, uh, 22,993,354 megalitres. So times 10 to the power of three cubic meters. Now, after the year 2000, we added this much capacity, 277,155,000 000, after the year 2000. That represents an increase as, a, as the portion of the total. That's our total, remember, that's including that. That increase from 2000 is 1.21% of our sub water supply capacity. And that's the reservoir size. Okay, that doesn't mean we've got that much water. That doesn't mean it's that full. As we saw in the video this morning, a lot of them are very low, but that just shows you the percent increase. Okay, and let's just bold that number. We'll bold that number. And we'll have a look here. A population in 2000 you know, was about 19.15 million. And the latest estimates for 2019 is 25.41 million. That's an increase, a delta change of 6.26, which is about a 24% increase. So you say 25% increase. So that means our population has increased 20 times more than our dams, pretty much. If we go, you know, we'll divide, divide, uh, divide this. I'm an architect. I can't use bloody Excel very well. So 2000% increase, 20x. 20x, guys. Wouldn't you love that on a crypto investment? I doubt you get it on anything else. Oh, no. Koshi says to invest in property, guys. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go 20x. So when I saw that figure, I was shocked. I was shocked. You know, 1.21%. Now, just think about this. Think about this population increase of 6 million people in that time period. How much of that has gone into development. We've seen, I've done previous videos where we've looked at just how much foreign investment went into Sydney to build all these apartments. Here's a question. A lot of it went on stamp duty. A lot of it went on headworks. Headworks, you know, to connect to the water supply, to connect to the sewer supply. You know, I know that's done at a council level, but then you've got the state level managing our water assets. Is there a miscommunication there? Should this infrastructure that's being built, you know, be also apportioned to ensuring we've got sufficient capacity moving forward, that we're not going to have shortages, that we, we're not stuck in these, these situations where we don't have enough water in different parts. I mean, at Queensland, we've been in drought. Every, you know, we've got droughts happening. We've had water restrictions here all the time. And when we went to the ECA, you know, they spent a fortune having a hall display and getting people to have 30 second showers to save water. You know, because the greenies don't want to, you know, build another dam or, yeah, you know, we can't, can't destroy a couple of trees. Let's just reduce our quality of life. Maybe we'll all just wash in buckets in tents. So 
you know, megaliters per population, the ratio. In 2000, it was 1.18. 2019, it's dropped to 0.9. So we're now at about 76% the equivalent capacity of 2000. So I'd say that's a reduction. That's not a good sign. You know, is this a miscommunication between the state, between the federal, between the councils? How can we have, how can we have this much of an increase in our population and only this much of an increase in our infrastructure? Okay? How? And then they're only reacting when it gets too bloody late, when people's lives are getting ruined. You know, they're, they're people are fighting over, over water and there's all these issues between different states all pissed on each other. Oh, they're stealing our water. Oh, they're diverting it here. The, the issue, I, I'm taking a step further back. We need to look at this bigger picture is how did we get to this point where we're increasing our population by this much and our water capacity, our water supply hasn't been increased or isn't increasing at a similar extent. I know we've got desalination plants. We've got a few of them. Is the one in the Gorg has it even running? Last time I checked, there were issues with it. They're talking about recycling sewerage water. We're a huge country here in Australia. Why are we doing stuff like that? We're not Hong Kong. We're not Singapore. We, we have land that can be used for this. I just don't think we have the political will. I think we've got too many people that are uneducated or that have got a very small view and don't really appreciate the implications that, you know, these, their decisions have on the quality of life for future generations, on just, just what we can achieve as a nation. They seem to think that gluing themselves to the street in Brisbane, protesting, uh, you know, a Dani mine will save the planet when it will make no difference. You know, doing something just to show off and feel good, which will actually have a negative impact, is not worth it. It's a bad thing. So... Yeah. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think this is good? Are you happy that your politicians have allowed this to happen? Did you know that it was this bad? Did you know? Because I bloody well didn't. I, I knew we'd, you know, it was a bad ratio. I, I did not realize it had grown, our population had grown that much since 2000. I remember being a kid, oh yeah, Australia's 18 million and boom, all of a sudden we're at 20, 25 million, probably 26 soon. And our birth rate is declining. So where, where's the population coming from? A lot of it's an immigrant population. I've got no problem with immigrants. I'm a first generation Australian, you know, aside from my, my funny voice and uh, my appreciation of German beer, I'm pretty Australian, you know, although they have this strange form of AFL here in Queensland called rugby. That's because I grew up in Victoria. Don't hold it against me, guys. So, yeah, I thought I'd have a bit of fun with this Excel table, guys. And, you know, it's all in here. And remember, this is just the biggest dams. There are other ones as well. The, so the solution for this is not going to be, you know, oh, I've, you know, I've got this great solution for regional towns. We can get water out of the air. I mean, that's just bullshit. If anyone tells you that, it's a con. It's dehumidifiers. It's going to burn more, more, more bloody power than anything. It's bad for the environment. Just look at any of Thunderfoot's debunking videos on Voice of Thunder. He just tears it to pieces. It's really entertaining to watch, but it's concerning that people are still talking about this stuff in this day and age. I mean, we've got We've got issues here where they're talking about infrastructure spending and they're building roads all throughout the country. And here's a call out to anyone. Could someone please, if you know of any, any um, economic uh, literature on the benefit of road infrastructure? Because since Australia's industrial capacity has decreased, a lot of our exports are going from mines. And, you know, we can, let's have a look at the complexity of Australia's economy. I mean, you know, we've got our iron ore exports here. How much of the, you know, the stuff here, how much of it actually uses our road infrastructure? Do you think uh, investing in, you know, the M1 from Brisbane to Sydney is going to have any benefit on our petroleum exports or our iron ore exports or the coal exports? Uh, how many of those are on private railway lines? So that, that that's an interesting argument because they're saying investing in that type of infrastructure traditionally has a benefit. That's when governments try to stimulate the economy. They always, they like to shoot it for housing because the dollar goes further, goes to the trade and moves on. I'd like to look at, you know, try and find, I've been looking very hard, but if someone could send me some stuff, I'd appreciate it. Try and find some evidence or arguments for the infrastructure, investment into infrastructure and compare and contrast it to other things. Because I mean, this, this is our water capacity. I'd like to see our power capacity how it's changed with population. You know, 
I'd like to see the cost of generating power, how it's changed with our population. I mean, because, you know, I can show you here how... What do we got here? Stop it. Uh, don't have it at the moment. The population power generation for Australia. I mean, if we look at what we have, it's, um, well, it's night time now, so it's not producing anything. So, yeah. Guys, I just thought I'd share this. Let me know what you think. Please like, share, and subscribe to see my additional videos. And, uh, yeah, I mean, bloody hell. It's not acceptable. See you next time.